welcome to my video today i'm fishing on the river trent now my face might look a bit red i've just been exploring a, a number of different swims along this stretch and it's quite it's quite an overgrown stretch a bit like jungle warfare i've picked a swim i'll, I'll show you the swim um and then i'm going to get myself set up once i've shown you the swim so it is that's going to be my swim there's reeds all along the far bank a nice steady flow i mean the water's quite low at the moment so this is where i'm going to try anyway now i'm going to get myself set up and then once i'm set up i'll talk to you a bit more about this stretch of river uh, and about this video hi as i said earlier i'm fishing on the trent today i'm actually on the upper trent now this video is going to be about fishing the trent basically i'm fortunate enough with a number of my different club tickets to have access to the tidal trend the middle trend and quite a lot of the upper trend so what i'm going to do is throughout the summer and probably into autumn i'm going to fish two or three sessions on each of the three areas and put that together into a video um, this is the first one actually so i've not actually done any of the sessions yet so we'll see what footage you get in terms of what i put in the video now this section of river i haven't fished a lot i did do a video last year actually on a peg a bit further down but that was only i think the third or fourth time i've ever been here so and this this is the first time i've been here since then uh, i've never fished this peg before uh, so it's all quite new i've had a look at the swim um, it's a really consistent bottom i'll show you the swim so I don't know if you can see on the video, just I know just before the middle maybe, there's a sort of bit of foam. Now between me and where that foam is, uh, it's about four and a half foot, four foot, but then past there, it's six and a half feet deep. Um, and it's very consistent on the GoPro. It's absolutely dead smooth, six and a half foot all the way down. And if I go right over to the reeds and it goes back up to about four foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish both rods basically down the middle in the six and a half foot water. My left hand rod is going to have a feeder on it. Um, and in that feeder, just put it back down. Oh, it's not a very good video, in, is it? My left hand rod's going to have a feeder on it and I'm going to put a 14 mil halibut, halibut pellet on that one. So that'll be put in scent down the river. So that'll be casted casted i'll be casting that out uh, quite frequently every probably every 10 15 minutes in the first hour and then it may be every 20 minutes in the second hour but that'll be going out frequently to get some scent going down the river the other rod will just have a straight lead with a with a boilie maybe a pva bag as well that one will sit below that one so any fish coming up the water may get to that one first if not hopefully they'll get to the feeder that's the plan um as i say i don't really know this stretch that well but um, and there's no one else here. I'm not sure if that's a good sign or not. I didn't see any of the cars or any of the anglers, so uh, it's not not that popular a stretch, which is surprising because you can drive along most of it. Um, anyway, I'm going to get the rods out now, and uh, I'll get back to you soon. Well, it's um, monsooning now. The rods are back in again second time I've had to get the rods back in once again we've got thunder and lightning it's not proving to be a particularly productive session so far I think I've spent more time watching the rain and the lightning than actually fishing it'll be dark in about an hour hour and a half so hopefully the rain will and thunder will blow over by then anyway Well, it's now just on the cusp of going dark. It's a, a sort of about half nine, quarter to ten. Uh, no fish so far. To be honest, I've probably spent as much time watching the rain and the thunder as I have actually fishing. We've had two proper big thunderstorms uh, for which I took the, both, took the rods out. Obviously, I didn't want to be standing around uh, in a thunderstorm holding a fishing rod. So it's now, as you can see, getting dark. But it's still raining 
I'm hoping the thunder's now passed. You can see that the upper trent is not as wide as it is further down on the middle and the, and the lower. It's still fairly narrow up here and it's also not that deep either. You know, it's five, six, seven feet in, in many places on the upper trent. But it's quite picturesque. I think it's probably more picturesque than the lower. Um, but not so many fish anyway. Right, it's getting dark, so I'm going to recast both rods in a minute, get fresh baits out, and then hopefully under the cover of darkness we might get a fish. See you later. There you go, first fish. Not particularly big. I just saw the end of the rod just flicking a little bit and I thought, is that a fish or not? And there you go. We're not going to weigh that or even photograph it, but it is the first fish of the night. Right, we'll get that one straight back. Hopefully without me falling in. There he goes. Here we are. Nice chub. Four pounds, three ounce. Not huge, but still nice fish. It's not the barbel that we're after, but better than blanking. All right, we'll get these back. See if we can get a barbel on the end. Yeah, there's a fish on this one. Oh, there is a fish on. I don't think it's a particularly big fish though. appears to have both lines which is not good here you go here's the another very small chub again I'm not going to be sort of weighing or taking photos of that but uh, that was the culprit so we'll get, get it back and get the rods back out. Yeah, we've got fish on here. We have a fish on here. It felt decent, I think it got caught in something and that made it feel much heavier than it was. But it's... Oh, in the net. In the net, it's not big. It's another chub. Another chub. There's the fish. I don't think we're going to bother taking lots of photos of that. It's what, I don't know, pound and a half, maybe two. It felt quite big at first. I think it must have got into a weed bed or something. We'll get it back. Well, morning. wasn't uh, wasn't the best session ever. Uh, it's my first sort of evening and night session on the Upper River Trent this season. It kicked off badly last. Well, yesterday evening we had lots of rain and thunder. We had two sessions of thunder and lightning and monsoon rains. And I um, I took my rods out of the water on both occasions. During the night, we did have four fish, we had four chub. Three of them were pretty small. I think two of them would have struggled to make a pound. One might have been about a pound and a half, but it wasn't weighed. Only one proper fish, that was at four pound three. Um, so it wasn't a blank, but, but no barbel. Um, but like I said at the beginning, the upper trend is not stacked with barbel. They are around, there are some but you don't turn up expecting to catch half a dozen. Um, the river's rising slightly due to all the rain, but not a lot. It's probably risen a few inches overnight, that's all. There's a little bit of weed, but again, not too much. You know, the rods were moving after 
a couple of hours, hour and a half, two hours, so it wasn't really a big problem. Uh, but yeah, just no barbell about, but I guess that's the way it goes. It's now sort of eight o'clock in the morning, so I've been fishing, what, 14 hours, though I guess I probably lost a couple of hours for the thunder, so probably been fishing 12 hours, so not a long session at all, pretty quick really. Um, so, yeah, so that's it. So we're off home and we'll be back another day to try again for the barbel. See you again soon. Hi, welcome to my video. Today I'm on the Middle Trent. This is a stretch of water I've never fished before, so obviously I've never fished this peg before. It is a good stretch, and some very big fish come out from here. I'm just below a weir, and if you can hear that on the, uh, on the video. Um, and already this season has been I think, some 17, even an 18 pound fish. Now this, this stretch gets fished a lot, so even though some big fish come out, you know, they're not climbing up the rods all the time. But there's definitely the opportunity here for, for big fish. I've literally just started fishing, I've just put my rods in. Um, I think it's probably more likely to fish better later than we all do now in the sunshine in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, but I'll put the rods out anyway. I put about 15 spots out. Um, I'm fishing in close, don't need to go too far. Uh, I put a mixture of pellets and boilies and particles, all in relatively close. I've got at the moment I've got a halibut pellet on one rod and an 18 mil boilie on the other rod. Um, and later tonight I'll probably change the pellet, uh, particularly going to leave the rods in a bit longer than I have at the moment. I'll show you the swim. This is my swim. As you can see, there's a weir there up to my right. Both my rods are fishing quite closely. So that's that's the uh, situation for today. I'm not sure how this is going to go. As I say, I've no experience of fishing here before, but I have spoken to a few chaps who do fish here and they've pointed me in the right direction. They've said, just fish close. Don't start casting more out, because they're below the weir, there's loads and loads of snags. You're just going to lose loads of tackle. They said, just a couple of rod lengths out, just with underarm, and the fish swim up and down the wall anyway. So that's the tactic. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully I'll see you later. Right, well, I've been fishing a few hours now, and I've just had one chub. It was about three pound, I didn't wait. Or even photograph it or even video it. Um, to be honest there wasn't really much of a fight to video. I've got two and a half pound test curve rods, so 18 pound mainline, 15 pound uh, coated braid hook lengths. You need to be fairly beefed up, you know, you need strong stuff here. You know, you are just below a weir, there's lots of rocks and snags and there is the potential for a big fish. So a three pound chub on that sort of strength of equipment really wasn't a fight to video. Um, so it was pretty much straight in. So yeah, so it went straight back to be honest. Um, it's now getting dark. It's about quarter past nine, half nine. I've just put another sort of dozen spots in. Uh, again, mainly particles, but with a few pellets and boilies. So this peg's meant to be better on an evening. So hopefully we'll see some fish come soon. And uh, yeah, get a few on the bank. Hopefully I'll see you later. Yeah.
we've got a fish on. We have a fish on. Keep coming. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Straight in. Right then, here's the fish. It's seven pounds seven ounce. It's not not huge. Uh, I'm down on this pontoon, so I don't have my um, tripod with me to record it properly. But you can see the fish. There it is. Right. Let's get it back. bend in the rod that is I can't even get it to come up hardly Could be a good fish. Certainly, it's fighting like a good fish. I thought it was snagged really badly. Right, well here it is. Twelve pound eleven ounce. Massive fight. Took thirteen minutes to get in. But what a tremendous creature that is. Huge, huge fight in this big, strong flow. Oh, right, we'll get it back in anyway. Good morning. It's um. 20 past 5 now in the morning, just had a flurry of activity, just had another barb and a chub. So it's not been, not been a mega night, but I've had three barb now, a 12 pound, a 10 pound and a 7 pound, two chub, one, one wasn't weighed, it was about three, uh, and just had a four, two. So uh, not bad, not bad at all, two doubles. And with the flow from the weir, it's really, really difficult landing the fish because the sort of power from the, from the pace of the flow even though they're 10, 12 pound fish, they feel like they're 15, 16 pound fish. Uh, it's good, so I've had a few, so I'm happy with that. But a few more hours yet, you never know. It's obviously it's daylight now, so we'll see if we can get anything else in the daylight uh, before it's time to go home. Catch up with you again soon. Well, that's the end of the session. No more fish, just the five fish, so three barbels and two chub. 
as you can see the middle trench with over my shoulder it's um it's quite a bit bigger than the upper trent it starts to become a bit of a beast once you get into the middle of the trent i think the next session is what i'll do is i'll go on to the uh the lower trent and then it really is big and wide uh, and then we've got the tide to contend with as well I think the next session we'll go up onto the tidal uh, and have a look up there it's not been a bad session today or last night say so five fish can't really complain i guess if i'm honest i'd like to have had one or two more fish and maybe one or two bigger fish but i guess wouldn't we all uh, so yeah so all good uh, i'm going to pack up now and head off home uh, and uh, see you again soon Welcome to another Trent session. Today we are on the tidal Trent. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to show you the water. This is the water we're going to be fishing. Now you can see, once you get this far down the Trent, it starts to become a bit of a beast. It's a significant piece of water. See up there. There's no real, you know, you're not going to drop it on a tree on the far bank here, really. It's quite a, quite a piece of water. Now, I have fished here before, and I have caught barbel here before. So I'm hopeful. This is where we're going to be fishing. Now, because it's tidal, obviously it's going to go up and down with the tide. So I'll put a stick in the water, a bank stick down here, and what we'll do is periodically we'll visit this stick and see how it is. It's just on the edge of the water at the moment, and then we'll have a look later and see if the water's gone out or come in. I think it's on its way in at the moment. So we'll have a look at that in a bit. So I'm going to get myself set up, and then we'll come back and have a look about how we're going to actually fish here. Right, so... I'm all set up now, bivvies up, my rods are out. Um, I think I said before, I, I have fished here before. Now, I have put my deeper out, uh, but the depth is as I thought, because I, I looked at my notes from last time. So it's around 10 foot, it varies a little bit, it goes nine and a half, ten and a half, but it's around 10 foot, and it's pretty consistent, literally from a couple of rod lengths out to, so it's certainly right out past the middle, it's 10 foot. And the flow is pretty consistent as well there isn't like an area of faster flow and slower flow so for those reasons i put both rods on the same line so i've got some measuring sticks so i'm using the line clip both rods are going out at the same distance one's being cast slightly upstream and then it sort of finishes in front of me the other one's being cast pretty much in front of me and it's finishing slightly downstream so um, so that's my plan unfortunately my spotter has broke which I'm a bit pissed off about. So I'd put 14 spots out and my plan was to put some more out later, but the spotters broke. So, um, you know, that puts pay to that. What I am going to do is I've got a feeder on the upstream rod, so at least I can keep some feed going in via the feeder. And the downstream rod, I've put a PVA bag. Um, I've got an 18 mil boilie on the downstream rod and a 15 mil on the upstream rod. Uh, so I'll cast reasonably frequently. Uh, just to keep some bait going in um, yeah and see how we get on last time i was here i fished pretty much the same distance because again i used the measuring sticks and I, and I recorded the distance so and i had some bites last time and some fish so you never know i mean it's a different time of year but uh, the river's about the same level as last time so fingers crossed well i think we might have a fish on It did feel quite heavy, but it doesn't feel quite so heavy now. But... It's a chub. And it's in the net. Ooh. 
we go. First fish of the session. Let's give that a moment to rest and then we'll have a look at it. GoPro stop. Right, well, here it is, first fish. Four pound, nine ounce. So, not massive, but not a bad job. Decent start. I mean, I've only been fishing less than an hour, so uh, it's always nice to get the first fish. So, right, we'll get it back and uh, see if we can get another one. So, it's now quarter past eight, and as you can see, the water was just touching the that uh, bank stick it's now quite well below the bank stick uh, so the tide has been going out i think it's uh, probably near the low tide now and it should turn and start to come back in soon um, and then of course i'll show you the stick again later when that's happened okay well it's now 11 o'clock i've not had any more fish since that chub but just to show you, there's my bank stick. It's now completely, well not completely, but it's almost completely underwater now. So that's how far the water's come in. So the tide's coming in and the water's much, much higher now than it was. That just gives you an idea. The water's right up here now. As before it was down past that stick. Just gives you an idea of how much it moves up and down. Anyway, I'm going to go and recast the rods. Well, this fish, it's a seven pound bream. It's just called Mayhem. It picked up one line, swam down, it went straight through the other line, and I've got a massive tangle. And now I've got to see if I can salvage either line, or possibly have to set up both again. All that for a bream. So it's, it's about quarter past 11 just wiped out both rods. Unfortunately there are quite a lot of bream along this stretch and seven eight pound bream are not that uncommon. Right, I better get it back and sort my rods out. Okay, we've got another bream on again. This is just continual bream one after the other. I've actually not recorded the last few. Oh, I'm not even sure how many this is now. This is seven or eight bream. Unfortunately, can happen on the Trent. You can get completely breamed out. That's what's happening so far tonight, anyway. I was living hope that the feeding bream will bring in some barbel. Another bream. We have got a fish on that does seem to be fighting back a bit. One could be a barbel or a chub, not sure which, but the net. Yeah, I think that's um, a small barbel. But at least it's a barbel. <laughs> Give it a quick rest and then we'll have a look. Right, well, here's that barbel. Not a big one. Seven pounds, three eighths. Still, looks very nice with its fins stuck up like that. It's got some quite big fins actually. Still, it's nice to get a barbel after all those bream. I think we've got about seven or eight bream, so good to get a barbel. All we need now is his grandmother. 
guys. We'll get it back. This has just gone off this morning. I like to think it's not another bream. So when it gets near the surface, it doesn't like it. Massive, but need to change from all the bream. Right, we'll give that a minute and then we'll get it out and have a look. That is the barbel. He dropped it. Not a monster, six pound six. But still, good fish. So here we are 12 hours later, it was about 7.30 last night that we looked at this and the tide was just below the stick it was going out and it's now 7.30 in the morning, so 12 hour cycle. Since then it came right up almost to the top of that bank stick and then it's gone all the way back down again and it's pretty much back where it was now. So it just goes to show the level of the tide impact on the River Trent. It does significantly go up and down. Right. Well that was um, an interesting night. I've had 18 fish in one night which is a good amount of fish. Unfortunately it was 12 bream, two roach bream hybrids, one chub and just three barbel. So not really what we wanted. Would have been good if the bream and barbel were the other way around, 12 barbel and 3 bream. So yeah, just got breamed out to be honest, which can happen on, on the trend. Um, <clears throat> I think maybe using particles sort of brought the bream in and think maybe in hindsight, maybe I should have just used boilies and pellets and not used particles as well. Um, I mean the bites were steady throughout the night, literally 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning I had bites and bream. Um, so a busy a busy night as I say 18 fish is a good amount of fish in one one overnight session but not really the target species um, as you would have just seen if you're now watching this I didn't record a lot of the bream there really isn't any point in me recording myself bringing in bream I wished I'd have, I wish I'd have shown one of the roach bream hybrids to the camera but I didn't we had some heavy rain in the night and it was absolutely pouring with rain when those two roach came. They came one after the other. And then just as I was putting the rods back out, um, one of the rods went and, and that was the other barbel which I didn't get on film. So when I'm casting I take my, my camera off my head uh, and I just use um, a normal sort of headlight um, because that's got better... I thought my rod was going to go then. Um, so my camera was in here and I was down, down the bank casting and the one rod went off so I didn't have my camera on and it was a barbel it was seven pound five um, and it was pouring with rain and I thought you know what I'm not going to bother setting up now to take pictures and get video of this so I'll put it back um, but we've got some shots of the other barbel and the chub and I think one or two of the bream as well so I took some footage but yeah I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put you through 12 bream um, so that was it, but as I say, that can happen on the trends. But we had three barbel, unfortunately, though no doubles. But uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. 
and maybe next time we'll cut out the particles and just stick to the boilies and pellets and see if that helps. Okay, see you again soon. Hi, welcome to another session on this Trent video. Today I'm on the Upper Trent. It is a section that I've fished before, though I don't know it really well, but I've never fished this particular peg before. The peg itself is fairly shallow. I have put my Deeper Pro Plus through. I've only got around three foot in most of the peg, but I purposely picked a shallow peg. The weather's been quite warm and the river is low. So I'm just hoping maybe the fish are in the shallower water where it's nice and weedy and the water's oxygenated. That's my rationale anyway. We'll see if, uh, if there are any fish about in a bit. I'll show you the peg anyway. As I've said before, the upper trend is not as big as the middle and the lower. And it's actually probably more picturesque, in my opinion. Again, this is a lovely peg. There's overhanging trees, there's reeds. It is quite a pretty area of the river. Anyway, let's try and get down here. We don't fall it over. So the rods are not fishing at the moment. So this is the peg I'm going to fish. I don't know if you can see on the video, but sort of about here somewhere the water sort of boiling on the surface there's a big bed of streamer weed there so i'm going to fish this side of that it's no going to be fishing across it my line would be in it and if have got any fish it'd be difficult to get them back past it anyway so i'm going to fish short of that now looking down here my right hand rod is going to go down this right hand side towards those trees about sort of here somewhere because around there there is a good three to three and a half foot of water and it's sort of dropping away so that one's going to go down there, not too close to the tree. Obviously, if I get a fish, I won't have a chance of getting it out. My left hand rod's going to be fished towards that tree, but as I said, a little bit short of the middle so I don't go into the weed beds. Now, on the right hand rod, I'm going to put a 16 mil boily on a size 8 with uh, a bag of pellets and broken boilies on the hook. On the left hand rod, I've got a size 10 hook. I'm going to put a 14 mil halibut to start with. I'm probably going to put a PVA bag on the hook, but also on the lead, because I think there's enough flow on that line for the pellets to move from the lead down towards the hook, as on the inside, I'm not sure there is. Once it gets late and I'm leaving the rods out a bit longer, I'll switch the halibut pellet to a boilie, because the halibut pellet, of course, will dissolve uh, after, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. So that's the plan. No idea if it's going to work, but um, I guess we'll see when I get fishing. I'm going to do some PVA bags and then I'm going to get casting. It is, um, what time is it now? It's 20 past six, so I need to get a move on. I've got my brolly shelter behind me, so I'll be uh, nice, nicely out of the elements there if we do get any rain. Though the forecast is hopefully dry, but yeah, so that's where I'll be. I've already got my uh, unhooking mat ready. Just being optimistic, really. So there you go. That's the plan. Hopefully see you in a bit. Well, we seem to have a fish on already. I didn't expect a fish this quick. I've only been out half an hour. Don't think it feels massive, but still, I'm guessing it's probably a chub. Is yeah, a small chub. Oh, still, it's a start. Okay, it's very small, so we will. I cannot believe how much that fish pulled that rod <laughs> I mean that is not a big fish it's probably not even a pound and yet it really pulled the rod quite amazing anyway let's get it back I think we're gonna weigh and photograph that one Ooh. Here he goes. This is the uh, setup, so it's got a running three-ounce lead, 
uh, a tempane fluorocarbon hook link. I don't know, it's probably about two and a half foot, something like that. Size eight hook with a 16 boilie and a little bag of boilies and pellets on the end. And that's it. I've got my 1.75 test curve rods. Though I'm on the trend, this bit, I knew I wouldn't be fishing very far today with heavy lead, so I didn't think it warranted 2.5 rods. So let me get this one back out. I've just had that little chub. Let's maybe get this one back out. That's it. That's probably slightly closer to that tree than I was anticipating. But just gotta hope if I get a barbell there, it doesn't go straight under the tree. But we'll leave it there for now anyway. So it's not far from dusk now, just at that one little chub. Had a few line bites though, so there's be a few fish about, but they could just be other small chub. Um, so we'll see. Ooh. That's my cup of coffee on the boil, on the GoPro. GoPro. Run about. Jet boil. Turn that off. There we go. But I love the jet boil. Perfect for this type of fishing. Absolutely perfect. I don't have shares in jet boil, by the way. Anyway, yeah, back to the fishing. So, um, yeah, I'm having a few knocks, particularly on this right hand one in the side. I had a few proper line bites on that one. Uh, Say so we're only about half an hour from dusk now. I've put my isotopes on them ready for dark. Um, I still, I, I do fancy there could be a fish or two after dark. I feel it in my blood. Right, see you in a bit. I think we've got a fish on this one. We have indeed. I don't think it's going to be a record breaker, but we have a fish on. <laughs> okay, we've got it out. This is a chub. Oh, catching the other line. go in the net oh. it's not a particularly big chub but we'll get him out and have a look I think we might have another fish on we have and that chub is still resting in the net. I was going to wait, but I've not had a chance. There's another fish now. It's um, coming in pretty easy. So it could be another small chub, I reckon. one small chub in the net and now another small chub in the net two small chub right let's get that one up on a hook tail and have a look at that one so here we are two chub we've got a two pound nine and a two pound five so yeah one on each rod not the barbel that i'm after but at least it's a fish so oh, Right, I want to get them back now anyway. Another fish on. Feels a bit better, but I'd say it was another chub. Yeah, 
It's coming in. Here he comes. Here he comes. In he goes. It's safe to say it's another another chub. Okay, we'll get it out and have a look. Here's the fish. They're getting bigger. This one's three pound ten. Nice fish. Not the barbel that I said earlier that I'm after, but still, certainly plenty of chub about. It's a fourth fish so far, and it's about half twelve now. So we'll uh, we'll get this one back and see if we can get a barbel. We've got another one. straight in the net first time another chub another chub this one's 311 so it's actually the biggest so far but uh, not really what we're after but still beats blanking Boys, right, let's get it back well it's early in the morning not quite sure how early in the morning and hopefully we've got uh, another fish on I don't know if it's too dark I suspect it's another chub it's coming in too easy coming in too easy to be anything else Might be the biggest chub so far by the fight. Oh. Oh no, it's a barbel. It is a barbel. Oh. Jeez. It came in quite easy, I thought it was a chub. Straight in the net. Oh. Get in. Get in. Oh. Wow, I thought that was a oh, that's definitely a barbel. Right, well we'll give that a bit of a rest and we'll get the scales and everything ready and we'll get it out and have a look. Right, well that fish was bigger than I thought it was. Here it is. There we go. Nice barbel that is. Eleven pounds two ounce. I was playing that like it was a chub because it came in quite easy, but obviously when it got to the net it fought. 
and uh, yeah, that, that rains off the session. Well, you never know, there's a few hours left, but it's getting light now. But that rains off the session very nicely. Right, we'll get this rested and get it back. Well, we're in again. <laughs> Not sure what time it is, so look, 6.40. It's gone right down there. Feels like a chub, but it's only the last one. It's a chub. Oh. Another chub. Uh. Could be a decent chub that. Well, I don't know. Right, give it a, a quick rest before we get it out. So it's what six forty this morning and. Left hand rod's just gone gone off. And uh chub. Not bad. Really lost it. Four pound ten. So not not quite a five pounder, but not a bad fish at all. Quite broad. So that's six chubs so far now. Right, we'll get it back then. Good morning. Well, I think my decision to fish a swim that was fairly shallow. Uh, it's got a bit of weed, a bit of pace on the water, so hopefully the water's quite oxygenated. Seemed like a good, de good decision. Um, you know, I ended up with six chub and a barbel, which is not bad. I mean, you don't don't expect to catch dozens of barbel on the upper trend. It doesn't have the volume of barbel that maybe areas of the middle and the, and the lower do. Um, I mean the evening started quite quiet, about 7 o'clock I had that very small chub that was probably not even a pound. Um, I was amazed actually at how much bend that put in the rod when it first picked up the bait. Um, but then it was quiet until after dark, um, I think it was about 20 past 11. Uh, had the next chub, that was like £2.9 and then literally while sorting that one out the other rod went. And there was another chub, and that was two fives. Had those two together. Then I think it was quarter to ten to one when I had the next chub. That was a three ten. And then it was half three in the morning before the next chub came. That was three eleven. And then the barbel. The barbel was about half four in the morning, and that was a funny, funny fight. Anyway, when the rod first went, I thought barbel. When I lifted it up. It, I felt a bit of weight and I thought again barbel but then when it started to fight or didn't fight it just came in like it was a three or four pound chub I mean you, you'll have seen on the video I was saying oh, it was just coming in like a chub and it was only when it got right in front of me that it started to fight again and even though I saw it was a barbel I didn't think it was that big I thought it was going to be about six or seven pound which is why I'd been able to read it in fairly easily and it was only when really I lifted the net out that I thought Blimey, that's that's got some weight to it and turned out to be 11 pound too so yeah that was a bit of a shock that it was that heavy uh, but a nice fish and then this morning was it 20 past six another chub at 410 so yeah six chub and a barbel that's a pretty decent session I mean I don't fish long sessions so you know I would say one or two barbel on the upper trend on a quick overnight is a success. I didn't cast out till half six last night and it's now half seven in the morning so it's only got 13 hours um, and I'm probably going to pack up in a minute. I'll probably be packed up by eight or so 13 and a half hours so not a big session. I mean, if you're fishing two or three day sessions then maybe you'd expect more than one or two fish 
in a quick session like that on the upper anyway um, that's pretty decent so yes yeah, so I'm happy with that I'm gonna finish my coffee pack away and uh, head off home and uh, I'll see you again soon cheers hi welcome to another Trent session so today I'm on the middle Trent so it's only just a middle Trent so my understanding is the upper Trent finishes and the middle trend starts at Shrawley Weir and the weir is just round the corner so I'm literally just onto the middle trend. Um, now I have fished this peg once before uh, and it was a barbel blank though I did catch a number of bream um, so it wasn't really successful. I was hoping to fish a couple of pegs just round the corner from here but they're being washed away. There used to be a lovely peg it was like a semicircle piece of land that stuck out from the bank and you could fish off it but it's gone and there was another peg to the left of that as well and that's just been washed away um so unfortunately they're no longer there anyway i'll show you this peg and then i'll tell you how i'm trying to tackle it okay so this is the peg we're right as i say surely we round to my left and then you can see you've got a great big bend here so probably pretty good for bream um, I also believe there's a few carp around here as well, though I've not caught one myself. Now, to my left, sort of, where are we? About sort of here, somewhere where there's a bit of flow. I don't know if you can see it. There's a there's sort of a main piece of flow that goes down the middle. We've got a good sort of 12 foot depth out there. But then as it goes to my right, as it gets to that sort of shack on the far bank, it goes to about 8 foot. So just a steady incline in terms of depth. And then as it comes towards me, in terms of this bank, it slowly slopes up, but it is very slow. There's not like a big drop off. It's not like three foot and then a big drop to like 10 foot. It's a very slow incline back up to this bank. So my left hand rod is out to the left. Uh, it's probably in about 10 foot of water. It's not quite as far as the 12 foot. And then my right hand rod is literally just an underarm cast couple of rod lengths out into what I believe to be about five or six foot of water it's just a steady incline up towards this bank so I can imagine fish particularly at night coming in a bit closer and slowly coming up that bank looking for food I know I've got a big piece of luncheon meat on that right hand rod uh, and an 18 mil boilie on the left hand rod now I've gone quite big because last time I looked in my notes and I used sort of 14 15 mil and got played by bream I'm hoping a big chunk of lunch of meat and the 18 mil boilie will put bream off um, so that's the plan anyway it's about quarter to seven now I think uh, the rods have only been out about 15 minutes um, it'll get dark about eight o'clock ish uh, so not too long to go really um, so um, yeah hopefully see you in a bit a few evening visitors here Hopefully they keep away, but made me jump all of a sudden. I just suddenly turned around. There was a a cow standing behind me, and one down there having a drink in the water. It's dusk now. I'm just I've just put both rods back out, just ready for it to go dark. Yeah. My bed for the night. There's a chap on the far bank just set up. He's fishing right into the corner where it's quite sort of static over there, the water. It's probably carp fishing. Interesting to see if I hear his alarms during the night. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you later. Okay, well that wasn't very good around the other rod, but here we go, we have a, a chub, I would say. So here's the fish, 
it's um, £3.13 so not quite £4 but um, first fish of the evening not quite the barb we're after but at least it's a start right we'll get the fish back and uh, get the rod back out we have another fish it's not a barbel though it's probably another chub water don't go in the water here it is yep it's another chub Lovely chubbly. Another chub. There's the fish. I've not weighed it. I don't know what that is. Two and a half pound maybe. Maybe even three. It's quite broad. But I'm not going to bother weighing it, I don't think. I'm just going to put it back. Here we go. We'll put it back. Should soon recover that. Yeah, it's soon up. It's not been out of the water for very long at all, so it will very soon recover. Here it goes. We have, I believe, what is a barbel on. Certainly shot off at 100 miles an hour. And he's put in a good old bend in the rod. Oof. Mr. Fish. Oh, oh, I don't think it's quite ready yet. It's a coming though. It's a coming. Not too happy about it, but it's coming. Come on, come to Andy. Oh, he's in the net. Get in, get in that net. There he is. Well, that was on the close-in rod on the meat. We'll give that a rest and then we'll get him out and we'll have a good look. So here's the fish. It's not quite as big as I'd thought it was or hoped. It's um, not a bad fish but it's not quite a double. It's nine pound five. Uh, so yeah, not a bad fish. It seemed it seems quite stocky but yeah, I was surprised the scales went nine five but that's what they said. So yeah. So, uh, not a bad fish though, we'll, uh, but, uh, we'll get it back and get that rod back out. Morning. Well, that wasn't the most productive of nights ever. Um, it was just the two chub, one was £3.11, that was weighed. The other chub I didn't weigh, it looked, it might have been about £3. But as I say, I didn't weigh that one, just put it straight back. Uh, both the chub came on the 18mm boilie on the rod that was a bit further out. And then at about 3 o'clock this morning the luncheon meat that was just underarmed, fairly close in, tore off and that was a barbel. Uh, but not quite a double, it's £9.5. Um, and that's it, so fairly quiet. It's now, I 
I don't know, about half seven, quarter to eight in the morning. Um, slowly packing away. I mean, the rods are still eight, but it's unlikely, I guess, they'll go off now. But you never know. They'll stay out for another 20 minutes, half an hour while I pack away. Um, so that's it. It's um, not fishing that great up here at the moment. I was talking to some chaps earlier. Um, and they said not a lot to come out and it's really quite quiet it's normally quite a busy section because you can drive half the section but there's hardly anybody here which I think is probably an indication there's not a lot coming out uh, but there you go we had a few fish anyway so we didn't blank um, so yeah so I'll see you again soon Trent session uh, so today I'm on the tidal Trent now the weather's not great, it's pretty sunny, the river is really low, um, really low. Um, it definitely needs some water but this is the time I've got to fish so um, yep, so I'm here, I'm going to make do with the conditions. Now I'm a little bit earlier than normal, um, so I've got a few more hours in the day, so I've put a, one of my rods on the maggot feeder just to see if I can pick anything up on maggots during the daylight. Out, uh, on an 18 foot boilie. Now, I've never fished this peg before, but I have fished the next peg further up. Um, I know that the main flow uh, and depth is on this side of the river. There's a bit of a sunken island on the far side, um, so the main flow is definitely on this side. I put my deeper Pro Plus through, and I've got between 8 and 9 foot uh, fairly consistently as well. So I won't be casting too far, gentle lob out, only quarter, maybe third of the way out, that's probably uh, as far as I need to go. Um, I've just got both rods out, I'll, I'll show you the swim. This is the swim. So as I say, both rods are not too far out. This left hand one has got the maggot feeder on and the other one's got the boilie on. So at the moment the tide is coming in. Uh, I think for well, maybe another hour I wait for high tide. Uh, it was much lower, but well, it does go much lower. It goes right down to the sort of edge of these rocks down here. So it's come, it's come all the way up. So it's on its way in. And then it'll turn and go back out again. And then I think tonight high tide is about two o'clock in the morning. stick some bait out now why it's coming in because as you can see the rods the rod tips are not bent over because there's no real flow because of it's back and it's coming in. In fact when I put my deep pro plus out with the wind blowing upstream it actually went upstream rather than downstream that's how slow the flow is or how little the flow there is. Um, so I'm going to get some bait out now. Some boilies out just catapult some boilies out because I know it's a bit like a lake they'll just drop through the water to the bottom and I'm going to spot some maggots out as well. Um, fingers crossed for there. We'll see some fish. See you later. As you can imagine, I'm not going to be weighing that. Well, quickly put that one back. I'm not quite sure now whether the tide's finished coming in or not. Might, might have finished coming in. Actually, let's see if it has. Feels quite heavy. Feel heavy anymore. <laughs> okay. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Because that definitely felt quite heavy. So I don't know whether a pike picked that up. 
but that's definitely not what I was hoping for. Clock is just about to get dark. Um, arriving a few hours earlier than normal hasn't paid any dividends to be honest. Um, on the maggot feeder I had one kamikaze roach and then not long ago I had that strange one with the perch. So the rod went and it felt really heavy and I was quite excited for a moment because I thought it felt like a big barbel because the big ones sometimes just plod about and that's what it felt like. It felt really heavy but it wasn't shooting off. Uh, but then it went very light and it was just a little tiny perch. So I think what probably happened is the perch attacked the maggots, got caught on the hook, it was probably splashing about, attracted a pike, which is what I felt. So it could have been, you know, it could have been a 15 pound pike or something. So that's probably why it felt quite heavy. Um, so yeah, so disappointed really. Um, no other action so far. I've got to be honest, the river, as I said earlier, is painfully low. There's hardly any flow at all. Normally when you cast out, you know, your rods are bend with the flow. But even when the tides have been going out, there's still hardly any pressure on the rod tip at all. There seems very little flow. I've not had many line bites. It seems very quiet. Um, I've got to be honest, I'm not very optimistic. But we're here, so we'll have a go and uh, we'll see. I've switched the maggot rod now to uh, a big lump of luncheon meat. The other one has still got a boilie on, uh, it's an 18 mil boilie, so I've just refreshed that, recast both rods, and uh, fingers crossed when it gets dark we might get some activity. So hopefully I'll see you later. Right, well, unfortunately I didn't get this fish on the camera when I was playing it. For some reason there was a, an SD card error on my camera. Anyway, here's the fish. Not quite a double, nice fish, nine pain, 12, put up a good fight, uh, but looks looks in good condition actually. No nipped fins or anything, which is nice to see. Uh, yeah, so first barbel of the night. So we'll, uh, we'll get it back and get the rod back out. We have a fish, hopefully this time the camera's recording. Tide's now coming back in. It was a good initial run, it took a bit of line. Mr. Fishy, come on, Mr. Fishy. In that net, oh, there we go, in that net. <sighs> right, give that a couple of minutes and then we'll have a, have a good look at it. Wow, what a fish this is. Look at that. 14 pound 11 that's quite a quite a quite a large fish certainly one of the best I've had for a, quite a while well I had a 14.9 out of the Derwins earlier didn't I but that's still a good fish isn't it oh 14 11 very very thick set fish nice condition as well excellent right so we'll get it back and Get the rod back out. 
Right, I think we've got I think we've got a fish on this one. We have indeed. And it doesn't feel particularly oh, I don't know. Definitely have a fish though. But the tide's just come in and the place is filled up with water and seems to have switched. Seems to be darting about quite a lot, maybe it's not that big. Swam into the net on its own, then. Oh. I don't think it is very big, but it's not in the net. <laughs> that's that's how not to do it. It's definitely not very big. Okay, now uh, hopefully, this is how to do it. There you go, in the net. Get the lid in. Ah. Right. As always, we'll just give it a minute and then we'll have a look at it. Right, well, this is uh, not as big as the last one. <laughs> there we go. There's a little scrapper. Really did give good fight and darted all over the place. £6.11. So, yeah. As I say, not quite as big as the last one, but still very nice. Again, all the fins in good condition. I've not seen any damaged fins recently, which is a good sign. Right, we'll get it back and get the rod back out again. We're uh, in again. <laughs> It certainly took a lot of line then when it went. This one's had its, had its three weeter bix or shredded weeds or whichever one it is or both. <laughs> Come to me. Oh. In the net, get in that net. Oh, hey, I reckon that could be another decent fish. Yeah, we'll give it a quick minute or two and then we'll, uh, we'll have a look. Right, well, we have another, another good fish. Oh, look at that one, 12 pound dead. It's another whopper in it. 
turning into a pretty good evening or night. 12 dead. I thought that was a good one. It fought hard. It did fight hard. Uh, probably fought harder than the 14 actually, but yep, yeah, good fish. Very good fish again. Fin perfect, no, no otter bites or anything, which is good to see. Right, we'll get it back and get the rod back out again. Okay, here it is, the 12 pound fish. Nice fish. All rested up. All rested up. Ready to go. We'll be in a minute. We get it. Leave it a minute. There it goes. Excellent. Pretty sure we have a fish on here. We just ran and then it's just stopped. Oh. Yeah, there's something on there. Is it a chub, maybe? Oh, it's our friend the bream. There we go. I wondered where they were. It's the first one I've seen tonight. There we go. The bream. There it is. One bream. I've just weighed it just for interest really. Not a bad size I suppose. It's six pound three ounce. Uh, but obviously not what I wanted at this time of the morning. Right, we'll get it back. Well, we've definitely got a fish on this took off like a bad of hell. This one had gone the other way, it'd been sudden by now. Putting up a good scrap anyway. I guess, ah, I can see, I can see a fish. Yeah. I think he's. Too happy about this. He's a coming. Oh. But he's not quite ready yet. in that net in we go in we go oh <laughs> oh another barbel right well we've got another double another double which is good going there we go 11 pound four ounce so that's oh, an 11, a 12, and a 14. So that's definitely 
keep it going. This one's a bit lively. But yep, yeah, 11.4. Very pleased with that. Another fin perfect fish as well. Right, we'll get it back. I thought it had a good barbel on, but it looks like it's a carp. Uh, it's not what I was expecting. It's just shot off this morning. And it's in the net. Wow. We wasn't expecting that. It's definitely a car. Mm. Not too happy about it either. Oh, well, we'll get it out and have a look. It's a 13 pound, four ounce River Trent carp. That was definitely a turn up. Something I wasn't expecting, but very nice call this morning. Right, well, we'll get it back and get that rod back out. Good morning. Well, that ended up being a pretty good session in the end. I have to be honest, yesterday afternoon when I spent a few hours on the maggot feeder, it was very quiet. The river's really low, and I was shocked at how little flow there seems to be. It's almost like you're casting out into a lake at times. So when it came to dusk, and it getting dark last night I really wasn't that confident but um, how wrong was I? I think the first fish arrived about 8.30 and the last one was just gone 7 o'clock this morning so they were all nicely spread out throughout the night I ended up with 5 barbel a 6 pound 11 and 9.12 uh, three doubles, uh, an 11.4, a 12 dead, and I guess the, the cherry on the top of the cake, the 14.11, that was some fish. And then this morning, uh, the last one, it just gone seven, was a carp. I mean, that really did take off. It shot down river. I thought it was never going to stop, but I guess that's because it was a carp. Um, and that weighed 13.4, and of course I had the obligatory bream as well was just over six pound. I don't think I've ever fished here and not had a bream. So yeah, one bream, but at least it was only one bream and not 10 or 12 like I've had in some other sessions. So yeah, a very successful night in the end. Really pleased with that. It's now about eight o'clock in the morning, so I'm just in the process of having my coffee and um, packing up and I'll be heading off home soon. So that's the end of this session, but it's also the end of this video shared with you footage from the upper trend, the middle and the lower trend. So hopefully you've been able to see how the river evolves, how it's quite small on the upper, it tends to be quite overgrown and then how it expands and it gets further down and when you get to the tidal the banks are often quite bare uh, and I've showed you how the river rises and falls with the tide as well and we've seen a few fish as well. I think I've had a double barbel off all three areas uh, we've seen some chub and some bream and even a carp so yeah so um hopefully you've enjoyed it so yeah 